everybody. Well, I've had a few commenters here over the past couple of months that have been asking me, when are you going to do another Thoughts on the Road? We really enjoy hearing about your journey and your travels. And, uh, well, I was planning on doing one, actually, um, here before I head back west, which I'll be doing in a couple of weeks. So, uh, here we are. Well, it is September 29th uh, today. We're almost up to October. And October is a milestone for me. It was mid-October of last year that I drove out of Fort Wayne in this RV. So, in a couple of weeks, I will have been living in this tiny house on wheels for one full year. And that was kind of uh, one of my original goals. Um, I just wanted to try to make it a year. And uh, it looks like I'm, I'm going to achieve that goal. <laughs> Uh, it was. It's been a. It's been an interesting trip so far. Um, I've seen a lot of different places. I've seen a lot of different ge geographies, creatures and critters. Met a lot of different people. Made friends in different areas. Uh, presently, I'm back in uh, Rockport on the southern Texas Gulf Coast. I'm four blocks from the Gulf of Mexico, and I'm here at the Taylor Oaks visiting with uh, Al, the owner, and his wife Robin, and uh, other friends and acquaintances that I've made here. It was nice to be able to make it back around and uh, make it back here and meet up with all of them again and spend some time here. But the temperatures are finally starting to change. Uh, it's, it's finally starting to cool off a bit, and I've been waiting for the, the desert southwest to uh, cool off and the highs to get down around 90. I'll put the Celsius on the screen somewhere here um, so that I could go back to the desert. I really enjoy the desert. So um, a year ago when I left out of Fort Wayne, I went down through the southern United States and uh, I made it down here to Rockport eventually. It, it was a late October of last year and I spent some time here. Uh, my plan at that time was to go out to Quartzsite, Arizona for Quartzfest in January, but as many of you that have followed me for a while will, will recall, my, uh, my father was um, killed in early January uh, from resulting injuries resulting from a car accident and uh, I ended up spending January back up in Michigan helping my mom and and my sister and, and dealing with you know everything that you have to deal with that uh, so I missed Quartzfest last year but um, when I got back to here in February the RV of course was fine Al kept an eye on it for me and um, I headed west uh, in February now um, when I initially headed west uh it was a little stressful i was a little anxious you know i up to that point i had only had a few weeks actually on the road in the rv and then i'd been sitting here at rockport basically in an rv park plugged in which was good because it gave me time to fix a few final things i needed to fix uh, in the rv and test out a few things and you know get it really ready for the road but when i left here back in february and headed west that was when my adventure really began because at that point in time i was heading into the unknown you know i was driving this thing that i was still getting used to driving i was uh, i was going to places that i had driven through in the past i mean i drove through the desert when i was young but i never spent any time there and i was really looking forward to actually living in the desert climate for a little while and seeing how my body reacted to the dry air and then eventually some altitude and uh, I really, really, really enjoyed it. Um, the dry air, I, I did have to adapt a little bit. My sinuses didn't like it. You know, I had a lot of little nosebleeds. Um, and that took about a month for that to stop. And uh, breathing was a little different. My, uh, I was a little more congested for a little while as my body was getting used to the single-digit humidity and uh, re-regulating, you know, how much fluid and how much moisture it... it, it admits to keep my throat and my bronchia wet you know I mean all of that had to adjust and, and and compensate but once it had I was much 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 more comfortable in the dry air I had noticed for years uh, through my life that the winters in the Midwest when we got down into the low humidity I felt better um, I have greasy skin more information than you need to know probably and I always have struggled with uh, with acne and uh, when I got out into the dry desert air oh after about uh, two or three weeks my skin was soft and, and I felt good and uh, it was just so much more comfortable. I found out, I've learned on this trip, that I'm definitely made for dry air. Uh, so that was a cool thing. Um, when I got out there, uh, I was 
brought, I, I ended up at a long-term visitor area just north of Yuma, Arizona, right next to the Yuma Proving Grounds. And uh, I met up with a whole bunch of hams that park there every winter in their RVs. The Rat Pack, they call themselves. Made a bunch of friends. Uh, the desert landscape out there was closer to what you might imagine a desert being. Uh, the classic image being sand dunes and cacti. Well, this is more realistic. It, it's um, definitely a bleak, or not bleak, but um, uh, less alive looking landscape, I guess you might say. Kind of an alien planet kind of landscape. But the sky, oh, the sky out there is an, an amazing. It's, it's not obstructed. Uh, what you have for an obstruction is the horizon, you know, and there might be mountains along the horizon, but the sky is just huge. It's, it's like a bubble over you. And it's beautiful. Um, the sunsets out uh, out there uh, around Yuma were glowing. The entire sky would glow orange, you know, and, and have this color. Uh, it was just beautiful. I really enjoyed that. Um, eventually, I think it was March. Towards the end of March, um, I went up to Quartzite, which is where Quartzfest is in January. And I found an even more amazing place there. The sunsets were even more spectacular. There was a little more cloud. And the entire sky would just light up with pinks and oranges and reds and blues and even greens. And uh, it, would, it would make the... Since you could see the whole sky, the sun would shoot across as it was setting in the west. The sky to the east would light up and glow too. I mean, it was just an amazing sky. And the place that I was staying out there, uh, which is kind of my secret spot, the place where I go when I want to be alone, um, it, there was a lot of stone art around there where people had had cleared the, the an area with the pebbles and, and gathered up little stone rocks and made up made these uh, these glyphs and designs in the stones. And some of these were huge. Uh, what we're looking at here, these these bits of stone art were. 15, 20 feet across, just absolutely huge. I was holding my camera up as high as I possibly could reach to get these pictures. Um, and just just really a cool place. I'm looking forward to going back there. I'm not going to tell you where it is, but that's the, that's where I'm going when I head back west. And I'm going to spend uh, three or four weeks there. I'll be doing some videos um, when I get there for sure. You know, I, I want to do some more experiments with the fan dipole antenna and that once, so once I get that up, you know, I'll be doing some videos and uh, maybe some more electronic videos. Some people have wanted to see um, some more videos on the Blue Mini VNA. So we might do one where we design a low pass filter and show how you can use a VNA to profile the filter and uh, fine tune it, you know, something like that. I'll be doing videos when I'm there. But uh, that area around Quartzite is, has the most amazing sunsets uh, that I have ever seen. And uh, I'm really looking forward to that. And so many of them were amazing. Easily five nights out of a week would have these spectacular bright colored sunsets. And the show would last an hour. I'd go out there with a cup of tea and sit in my chair and just watch the sky change as the colors changed and the clouds changed. And... Uh, just just astounding skies out there. And the desert around Quartzite was less barren, uh, much less barren. It was more lush. Lots of vegetation, brittle bush and um, creosote bushes and all kinds of different plants. Um, so it was very green uh, for a desert. And of course, bolo cactuses, the, the classic big, tall cactuses with the arms that hang out of them. And all kinds of wildlife and birds, coyote, um, uh, would howl off in the distance at night and yip and yap and uh, occasionally donkeys you'd hear donkeys braying there's wild donkeys around there too around Yuma especially uh, so you know I'm really looking forward to getting back out there uh, from there when uh, they kicked us out of those long-term uh, visitor areas I think it was April 15th May 15th no wait hold on March April April 15th they close the official season there because the desert down there just gets too hot and you could actually die of an RV. Uh, the temperatures will exceed 100 degrees Fahrenheit, more than 40 degrees uh, Celsius, I think. And if you're out there in the exposed desert with the sun beating down, it can get much hotter inside of an RV, even with the windows open. You know, So you could actually, you could die out there. So they kick you out um, on the 15th. 
And from there I went up to Kingman, Arizona, which was a little bit north, but also much higher in altitude, 3,500 feet um, in altitude. And uh, that was an interesting place too. Um, more wildlife in Kingman and more sunsets, just beautiful glowing skies and beautiful sunsets. But uh, we had some more interesting wildlife. Uh, one morning I woke up and there were paw prints right through the area, right next to the RV. And I think I've got a picture of my hand next to one of them. So it, this was either a really large bobcat or a really small mountain lion came right through the camp. <laughs> that, that was just cool. Um, there was a coyote again. Packs of coyote would come past the area at night. You'd hear them yipping and yapping, chasing a rabbit or something, going like right down the road, right past where the RVs were parked. Uh, they'd howl in the mornings. Uh, the hawks and, and other raptors that were flying around, uh, they, was, they were plentiful. Uh, here's a picture of a hawk that was just up on top of a telephone pole right next to my RV. Um, you know, that's a Cooper's hawk. Uh, it, you know, so it, it, wildlife was really interesting there in Kingman. Uh, but it, uh, it got a little warmer, too. Um, I did have AC power there in Kingman. I was staying on a plot of land that was owned by another ham. Then he was spending the summer in Michigan, and he told myself and James, um, KB7TBT, uh, that we could stay on his land for the summer if we wanted. So we had AC power. We had a, a septic system to dump our tanks into. And uh, we had a 500-gallon water tank that we could tow down to a water depot and fill up every couple of weeks or so. Uh, so it was really a, not a bad place. Uh, I really enjoyed uh, spending some time there. And uh, it, the heat wasn't terrible. I, I had air conditioning, and it's working fine in the RV. And, and it, uh, it, kept me, it kept me cool enough. Um, the days that it was 104, 105 outside, it'd be about 81 or 82 inside of here, which was fine. The air conditioning would run 100% of the time, pretty much from about 10 a.m. until about 5 at night. Uh, but uh, yeah, it was it was not bad. I, the, what drove me away from the um, Arizona was the monsoon storms that started up. Uh, this was actually a dry season out there, but usually that's they're more active. But these massive, massive thunderstorms would come through and form. Uh, there's washes out there where the desert is cut with dry riverbeds, and those are from the monsoon storms. So you'll get storms that come through um, in the mid to late summer that will dump, you know, two or three inches of rain in an hour. And that, that water has to go somewhere, so it cuts down through the desert in these washes. And um, those storms themselves can be quite dramatic and violent, uh, highly electrical, lots and lots of lightning crashes. Uh, and lots of rain, and they can have straight line winds of 50 to 60 miles an hour. Uh, it's they're they're big storms, <laughs> and uh, I didn't want to be in I didn't want to be in the middle of one with this old RV. It's rickety enough. It's just holding together, and I I, I need it to hold together for me uh, because this is you know basically my home. So I ended up coming back here uh, to Rockport there in the later summer. Um, one interesting thing that happened, though, before I left, uh, one of those big monsoon storms came right past where we were, uh, just the other side of the mountains that, that were next to us uh, in a place called Golden Valley. That storm moved through, and it was about two and a half, three hours long of purple skies over there and lightning and, and all kinds of electricity in the air. And uh, Tony, the guy that owns that land, has a small tower and an 80-meter a uh, full wave loop that is about 30 feet off the ground, 35 feet off the ground. Uh, and of course we had, James was parked next to the tower and had would hook into those antennas. Well, he had the coax unhooked because there was a storm going past. And I was standing out there watching the storm going by on the other side of the mountains and I heard this crack, crack, crack. And I looked over and walked over to the tower and the coax was wrapped up in the leg of the tower and the end, the uh, PL259 end, was, oh, about a quarter of an inch from the tower leg. And about once a second, there was a spark jumping. It was so much static electricity in the air. The air out there is so dry. You know, if, if, if uh, those of you in the Midwest, U.S., or other countries where you get dry winters or drier air during the winters, you know that you walk through your, your house, you'll build up static electricity and get shocks off of everything, you know, with that dry air. Well, out there single digit humidity the air is dry generally even if there's a storm going by the humidity might be low and there's so much electricity in the air 
that it was drawing a quarter inch arc off of that connector to the tower leg um, just from that 80 meter loop that was up there in the air. So it's pretty amazing. But uh, anyway, I came back here to Rockport um, to visit Al and his wife Robin and the, and the other acquaintances that I've made here. And I've been here for a couple of months now, I think, um, and, you know, enjoying visiting with everybody and uh, the, the environment here. You know, I'm just next to the ocean. It's, the Gulf is four blocks away. But what I've uh, reaffirmed for myself is that I'm definitely more comfortable in dry air. The humidity here is just driving me nuts. Uh, I'm greasy all the time, and I just the air feels like it's sticking to you. The air itself feels like it's just clinging to you here. And a lot of people like the humidity. You know, uh, most people have drier skin, I guess. You know, I, I remember winter times up in Indiana that people would be slathering on lotion all the time because their, their hands would crack around the joints. Their skin would crack and maybe even bleed from the dry air or their lips. They'd be putting on chapstick. Uh, and a lot of people probably like that here, like the humidity, but not me. Um, it's been kind of miserable, the humidity. So I am looking forward to going back west, uh, coming up in, uh, well, a couple of weeks, October 10th, I guess, is, is my target date to pull out of here and head west again. The temperatures are starting to get lower out there. Um, what's going to happen when I head west again? Well, what's coming up? Uh, well, I am going to take a week off once I get there. I'm just not going to think about the channel or videos or anything. I'm just going to relax, enjoy the desert, enjoy those amazing skies. I'll probably take some pictures and things. Uh, people on Patreon, though, you guys will get uh, you guys will get some status updates. I'll do like I did on my last hiatus and, and post you an occasional little video or uh, update or some photos. And I'll probably do that on the trip, too, on the travel out there. It's going to take me two to three days uh, to drive back out there. And uh, hopefully everything goes okay. Uh, I'm always a little bit nervous when I go out on the road you know is this old rv it's a 2002 it's got 108,000 miles on the engine um is it gonna hold up <laughs> is something gonna break down you know it's, it's a big question mark when you pull out on the road and that's kind of stressful but you got to do it you know so um it'll be a, a little bit of a stressful travel trip out there uh, but once i make it there i know i'm gonna feel so much happier uh, i really like the desert uh if if it wasn't for the heat of the summer i would love to just live out there all the time so i'm going to get out there i'm going to take a week off and then i'm going to get busy on uh, on stuff i want to do some antenna experiments uh, i want to do i want to try to somehow get that uh, big 80 meter fan dipole experiment back up so i can can look at that further and answer a few questions that have popped up in the comments uh, about that antenna for you guys. So we're going to do that. Uh, I'll probably spend a month or so up there around Quartzsite um, until it starts to get chilly. And once it starts to get chilly, I'll head down to the area around Yuma and hang out with the Rat Pack uh, through the winter, with the exception, of course, of uh, Quartzfest. Um, and speaking of Quartzfest, I guess I can talk about this now. It looks like it's definitely going to happen. I had an idea. Uh, they were looking for uh, more presenters uh, for Quartzfest. And uh, I had an idea, and I contacted Kristen Weed, one of the organizers, with my idea, and they loved it. They loved it. There's several YouTubers that are going to be there at Quartzfest. Um, I'm going to be there. Uh, Randy Hall... Dave Kassler, um, Bob uh, K6UTC, I think is his call, if I trust my memory. I've got all the information written down, is going to be there. Um, and I had this idea to do a panel of ham radio YouTubers. And we could talk about our experiences in, and adventures in starting a ham radio-based YouTube channel, uh, challenges that we've overcome, or, or you know, interesting stories about it. Uh, and then we could take questions uh, from the audience members, too, you know, do a Q&A session. They loved the idea, and they said, that's a great idea. Why don't you organize it? <laughs> okay, <laughs> it's my idea. I guess I need to uh, take on the responsibility of it. So I said, okay, and I started, uh, I started contacting people. And I have confirmed uh, participants now. Dave Kassler, 
good old Og, he's, he's going to be there and he's going to be part of the panel. Uh, Bob, uh, K6UTC, he's going to be part of the panel. Uh, Randy Hall, you, you, you know Randy, he's, he's going to be part of the panel. The one and only Jerry Ellsworth, I'm excited about that. She's going to be part of the panel too, so that'll be, that'll be fun. Uh, we'll probably have a virtual contribution uh, from Callum, the DX commander. Uh, I will be closer to the event. I'll be putting out a call for questions uh, that you might have and compiling a list of that, passing it around and letting everybody take a couple of questions off the list to answer, uh, including Callum. Uh, so he'll probably have a couple of questions to answer, make some kind of a, um, a statement about his experiences. Uh, so we'll have that virtually. Probably just audio. Uh, I don't think I'll have a way to project video out there. Um, but we'll see what happens. We'll see. As, as I get closer to the event, I'll have more information about what we're going to have available and how we're going to do it. And the other one, the, the last one that I'm working on, and I'm hopeful because I do have um, people that are in contact with her, and she seemed to be open to the idea. We may have a virtual contribution from the one and only Dr. Tamitha Scove. You know her. She does the solar reports uh, for Ham Nation and all. So she will be probably participating in the panel as well, albeit a virtual one-way uh, presentation. She, you know, she won't be able to be there. Or she'll be traveling. Callum obviously can't be there because he's over in the United Kingdom and he's not going to fly here, rent an RV, and drive to the desert just <laughs> to be in the panel. Although I, yeah, I kind of wondered if maybe he could be talked into it, but no, no, he can't. So that's what's going to be coming up at Quartz Fest. Um, I'm going to be moderating a panel of YouTubers, uh, ham radio YouTubers, as one of the presentations there. So if you're coming to Quartz Fest and uh, you want to talk to us um, and, or have questions for us or I'll, you know, hey, sign up for that panel and hopefully uh, I can pull it off well and it, it's, uh, it's good. I, I think it will be. So, uh, yeah, that's what's going on. Um, that's uh, my thoughts on the road for this quarter. I guess I'll do them quarterly. And uh, I hope you found that uh, entertaining. Um, and uh, we'll, uh, we'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Also, if you're not already a subscriber, click to subscribe. Join us on the Facebook channel for discussion about the videos. And if you'd like to help support this channel, please click to support me on my Patreon page.